Well, the question I'm asked more than almost any other is, John, how can professed followers of Jesus support someone like Donald Trump? Well, actually, the answers aren't that much of a mystery, so let's dive into it. Today, we're going to look at the top five reasons Christians support this president. Number one, a really bad God story. Most of the people we're talking about today are white Christians, specifically white evangelicals. Now, white evangelicalism is built on the fraudulent premise that God is a white, cisgender heterosexual man who was born in America, raised Christian, and votes Republican. With this as the default setting for God, you're naturally going to perpetuate injustice against people who don't fit that description, and you're going to naturally embrace people who do. Now, in walks Donald Trump, embodying all the qualifiers that these people raised in a really bad God story need. Number two, daddy issues. Now, baked into white evangelicalism is a deep love for authority. These people value obedience to a leader who is above them. And so when someone like Donald Trump enters the picture, someone they're already comfortable with, and he says, I alone can fix this. I can solve all your problems. I can get you out of the mess that you're in. Though these people who are so needing a leader will embrace him. And this is the rub here. Once they embrace Donald Trump as leader, as savior, as Messiah, they don't have to do any more work. The only thing they have to work at is simply believing him. He's going to be right all the time. His adversaries are always going to be evil people. And every word out of his mouth is going to be gospel truth even if it's a lie. Now, in addition to having a love for authority figures, white evangelicalism is also steeped in misogyny, in the value of men more than women. And unfortunately, so many women who have been raised for decades in this patriarchal sexist religion, they have an internalized misogyny that really doesn't see their value. So when they encounter someone like Donald Trump who clearly has contempt for women, who has been documented as saying the most horrible and dehumanizing things, they're somehow still able to see him as good and godly and worthy of respect and worthy of adoration. Number three, the pro-life lie. Now, one of the master strokes of Donald Trump's presidential campaign in 2016 was getting people to believe that he was actually pro-life, that he was against abortion. And he did this the way he does so many things with people who support him. He simply stated that he was. And that's all they needed. They so desire to have the narrative about him that they need be true that they will discount facts and data and information in order to believe it. Now we can see in Donald Trump's presidency, he is not pro-life. He is not for humanity in any real measure. He is not for migrant families, and he's not for sick people, and he's not for the elderly, and he's not for the poor, and he's not for LGBTQ couples, and he's not for shooting victims, and he's not for young men of color, and he's not for anyone really but himself. But remember, if you so desire a story to be true, as these Christians do about Donald Trump, you will do anything to believe that story. You will even discount reality right in front of you. Donald Trump is not pro-life, but Christians who profess to be pro-life and who want to justify supporting him really want him to be. Number four, white supremacy. So many white evangelicals have been raised in a faith that is steeped in nationalism and white supremacy and on a religion that tells them they're continually to be afraid. They're to fear immigrants and outsiders and foreigners and the liberal media and gays and Muslims and atheists and Harry Potter and mandalas and special counsel reports. Over and over again, they're perpetually terrified and Donald Trump steps in and says, yes, white Christians, all the things that you're afraid of, you should be afraid of and I'm gonna stand with you against those things that you fear. And so in his overt language, in his tweets and press conferences and in his legislation, over and over he reinforces whiteness, he reinforces nationalism, and he undergirds a supremacy that they feel at their core. Number five, capitalism. Trump's white Christian base is largely a part of the group known as the religious right, a really conservative group of Christians who for decades have had really strong political and social influence in our country. 
However, they have been steadily declining in numbers, in influence, in popularity, and their voice has been marginalized over time. In fact, if Hillary Clinton had won the election in 2016, well, they would have been seen as the dying dinosaur that they are, and they would have been further silenced and further marginalized. White evangelicals recognize that they had in Donald Trump someone without a working morality of his own just an empty husk who would adopt the moral convictions of whoever partnered with him. And so they decided, we'll make Donald Trump a Christian. So they put him on stage at Liberty University. They had him say a couple of things about religion, completely inaccurate things like 2 Corinthians. And he made some photo ops at prayer breakfasts or religious functions or at a church service. And suddenly he was sufficiently Christian for millions of Christians to support. Now, never mind that Donald Trump has no interest in emulating Jesus in any quantifiable measure, that he knows nothing of the gospel teachings, and even if he did, he would have no interest in living those out. In fact, if Donald Trump encountered the biblical Jesus, he would probably make fun of him and malign him and oppress him and persecute him and send him away. But for Christians who really want to support Donald Trump on the grounds that he is a Christian, that he is anointed by God, well, all they need are some pastors or evangelists who they respect to say that Donald Trump is a Christian, and suddenly, voila, he's a Christian without Jesus at all. Now, of course, there are other reasons Christians support Donald Trump, but I think these five really capture the lion's share of them. A really bad God story that says God is a white, cisgender, heterosexual man who was born in America, raised Christian, and votes Republican, and they really want to perpetuate that idea. The daddy issues that need an authoritarian leader, especially a man, to tell them what to do, and that's something Donald Trump just thrives doing. The pro-life lie that Donald Trump is actually against abortion or pro-life or for humanity in any way. A Christianity that is steeped in whiteness and supremacy and nationalism and the fear of the outsider that Donald Trump is brilliant at leveraging. And a good old-fashioned capitalistic money and power grab by which they see in Donald Trump someone who will get them what they want. Now, it might seem surprising that people who profess to follow Jesus or say they love God would embrace someone with the lack of character that Donald Trump has, but it's really nothing new. The Old Testament records the story of the Israelites, and at first they're following God, they're being obedient, they're being faithful, and then they begin to lose their way, they begin to compromise their convictions, and they end up bowing down before a false idol. They end up worshiping a golden calf. So it really shouldn't be surprising to us that a few thousand years later, religious people are still compromising their convictions and losing their way and kneeling before an orange jackass. So how about you? When you see people who profess to follow Jesus and somehow embrace this president, what reasons do you come up with? Leave them in the comments below and we'll continue the conversation. Thanks.